Moody's analytics chief economist Mark Zandi, who says dangers to the economy appear less threatening at these levels. Uh, Mark, thanks for being here. Just just quickly on uh, Powell's talk yesterday, there was some suggestion that the hawkish tone was a result of some loosening market conditions, namely the yields declining over the past few weeks. Do you think that's uh, that's part of it there? Yeah, that's my interpretation. I mean, we saw the stock market rally. We saw bond, long-term bond yields come in. Uh, financial conditions eased. And I think uh, uh, Chair Powell just wanted to make sure that the financial markets don't get ahead of themselves. That I think he feels pretty good about where financial conditions are, feels pretty good about where inflation expectations are, doesn't want to change that. So I think the speech was more strategic in that sense than anything else. In terms of just kind of specific metrics that they may be watching to actually raise rates from here, how high of a bar do you think that needs to be? Just a, a slight tick up in inflation, a pretty substantial tick up in inflation? Uh, I, you know, Leslie, I think it's inflation expectations is really very important here. I mean, if inflation ticks up because, you know, we've got a, oil prices up and gasoline prices uh, rose with it, uh, no big deal uh, if, if it's deemed to be temporary. But, you know, if uh, bond investors start marking up their expectations for future inflation, I think that's when the Fed you know, goes on high alert, starts raising rates. I guess the other indicator uh, that's related is uh, wage growth. You know, if uh, if consumers, workers start to think inflation is going to be higher and start demanding higher wages mm. and start getting it, I think the Fed would be nervous about that as well. So I think inflation expectations, wage growth are probably at the top of the list of things that they're looking at to gauge you know, whether they should raise rates again or not. To that point, we've now seen resolutions from the UAW strike, the writer strike, the actor strike, uh, the Vegas strike threats uh, seem to be resolved here. Do you think ultimately those will turn out to be inflationary events? Uh, I think they're symptomatic of a very tight labor market and the strong wage growth that we're getting, but not by themselves, no. Uh, I mean, I think the, the fact that they've got resolved in you know, reasonably uh, short order of, of, of time and reasonably amicably, I, I think, indicates that you know, uh, labor markets are working pretty well here. You know, the, the key in the labor market uh, is really the, the quit rate. You know, the percent of the folks out there that are working, that are quitting their jobs. I, that, you know, when you have a lot of people quitting, that's when wage growth is very strong. And, and that's not what we're seeing right now. So it feels like the labor market is easing up pretty much on cue. Hey, Mark, um, you know, there's always a certain component of the sort of financial community that's worried about deficits and debt and has been for years and warning that the end is coming. But it does feel as though it's ticked up a bit lately with what a national debt, 34 billion, two trillion dollar deficits possible, interest costs rising substantially as we need to refinance a good amount of that debt over the next few years. You've spoken about these issues, I think, at least been willing to weigh in. What are your thoughts on sort of this latest chorus that seems to have a bit, few more voices in it? Yeah, well, I think it's a problem, David. Uh, you know, I think our fiscal issues are really front and center. You know, it's one thing when interest rates are low. You know, when rates are 2 percent on a 10-year Treasury yield, uh, you know, you can uh, run deficits and have uh, higher debt loads and your debt service stays down, your interest payments stay down. But now that rates are up and uh, headed north, uh, we, we don't have that luxury anymore. We have to address our fiscal situation. And, you know, uh, you know, just a statistic, uh, we're going to spend more on interest expense, interest on the debt, than we are going to pay on defense in the not too distant future. And I think that just is testimonial that we need to really think about this. And I think bond investors are really attuned to it. You can feel it like yesterday's auction was just, as Steve said, was pretty sloppy. And we're going to get more sloppy ones if, you know, we don't address our long-term fiscal situation. And then you throw in the dysfunction in Washington, and you ask yourself, how are lawmakers going to ever get yeah. this together? Yeah. And, you know, it's reason for nervousness.